attended some of our programs. She conducts a lot of webinars on retirement planning and personal finance. So indeed, today we are very privileged to have her speak to us. In fact, last week I panicked when she told me that she'll be away in South Africa to attend some of our clients. But she said uh, she'll find time to speak to us. Thanks, Rose, for being available. Maybe just a, a brief introduction of Rose. She's basically a financial and retirement planning consultant and a trainer. She has over 22 years of experience in financial services, having worked for 17 years in leading insurance companies in that sector of retirement planning. Uh, she helps individuals and families to simply financial decisions and gain clarity and confidence in their decision making. She's also an author of the book. She has written one book. I've read it from end to end. It's a book you need to read. Actually, you can get it online. Very, very practical book about retirement planning. Retirement planning, a holistic guide to a satisfying season. That's the title of the book. And it's about to release a second book. And it's entitled, and the young people really must read this book. Before you earn your first income. Before you earn your first income. Money management basics you should know before you graduate from school. Uh, Rose holds a degree in commerce from the University of Nairobi and has got a Master's of Business Administration from uh, Strathmore University. Uh, she's just gotten a, a scholarship to go and study in the U.S. to further in this area of financial planning. So probably we should be one of the last people <laughs> she'll be talking to before she goes out. So again, Rose is a committed Christian, born again, and I'm sure... As he handles this, I, I'm sure you will notice that he will quote a lot of a lot of verses. So I want to take this time, uh, our sister Rose, to welcome you to our church. This is uh, Clemani Springs SDA Church, and we want to welcome you in a very very special way to join us as you talk to us on that, this very important topic. You know, uh, there is one uh, verse in the Bible which is very pertinent here. I'm sure most of you know, say, for six, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. I think today, let's sit comfortably in our seats because I think we are going to be given some very important information about how we need to do certain things. So, Rose, before you speak, we're going to have a special item, again from Mary. After that, please take over. I know you have a lot to say to us. I don't want to take too much time. Uh, Mary, you can sing as we invite uh, Rose to speak thereafter. Good evening, once again, I'll sing song number 16, Nimbo uh, Sacristo. They said, Lord, how much I need thee. Thank you, Swahili. Wana di na kuhita jini mko maskini unishike mkononi kwa kona pata nguvu kila sa kila sa wana di na kuhita Kila sa, kila sa, unilinde kila sa, univike na mavazi ya usikifu wako, nguwa za nguni machafu na zitamani zako. Kila sa, kila sa, wanani na kuhitaji. Kila sa, kila sa, unilinde kila sa. 
Wewe ukiniongoza nitakwenda salama nenda na misiku zote unuru na uzima kila saa kila saa bwana ninakuhitaji kila saa kila saa Unilinde kila saa na ikiwa mbeleni sehemu ya ngungumu au ikiwa furaha unilinde kila saa kila saa kila saa bwana ninakuhitaji kila saa kila saa unilinde kila saa kila saa kila saa bwana ninakuhitaji kila saa kila saa unilinde kila saa be blessed thank you sister mary I take this very special honor to welcome Ross Wakiria to speak to us. Karibu Ross. Good evening everyone. Thank you Ken uh, for your int uh, introduction and also for your invitation to come and speak to your community. So good evening everyone again. Um, it's a joy to talk about this subject which I like talking about. And I hope that uh, as we go, we discuss it, uh, we will learn from each other. So there's no one who is a monopoly of information. I hope that we will get to share um, and exchange knowledge. But I must commend you as, as a community. Uh, when Ken invited me, he told me that you normally listen to these webinars as families. And I think that's a very, very good idea. Uh, where the young and the old together, they are able to learn and even have a uh, conversation starters. So I hope to, to, to share information that will help both uh, extremes and even those who are in the middle. So I think I have about an hour, so I'll go, I'll go straight into it. And just a little bit about um, why I do what I do or how I came to start uh, doing what I do. I like sharing that story. Uh, because I believe a number of people can relate with it. So I did my 17 years in corporate and I started feeling like God is calling me to do something else, but I wasn't sure what it was. But I remember having holding a meeting with uh, some of our retirees. Uh, by then I was working in, a, in, in, I was working with Ken, actually Ken was my boss. And um, we used to hold uh, meetings with retirees because once they convert their savings into an income, there isn't much engagement with them. It's just a payroll entry. But we wanted to know how they are faring as they settle in in retirement. And I remember holding a meeting in Nairobi and Mombasa. And most of the people who came were people who, are work, who had worked with very big organizations, what we call the blue chip companies. So they had good retirement benefits. But it was interesting that most of them felt that they were ill prepared for retirement. They were like, if, if they knew what they knew then, earlier, they would have done it differently. And, and of course, I asked a few questions. And I remember one uh, elderly man telling me, Rose, I think you should go back to the younger people and teach them how to prepare for retirement. And that is where I got uh, my idea of, of stepping out of corporate. And I have found that there's a much needed, um, there's a, a great need out there for people to prepare for retirement. Ken has alluded to, to a research that has been done. I have, I have not, I don't have the details about it uh, that says that Kenyans are the least prepared amongst the East Africans. I, I wouldn't claim to know why, but I, I would like to say that this is a very common phenomenon all around the world most people are not prepared for retirement. Uh, partly because, I don't know, uh, it seems like it's, a, it's something that will happen uh, very far, especially as you start working. And then there's the busyness of life. There's so much going on. Um, and before you know it, now you are approaching your 50s and into your 60s. 
But I think um, also from my practice in the last five years, where I've worked primarily with um, mainly majority of my clients are people in their 50s and above. It's been interesting to see that even amongst my clients, it's only one client I have worked with, who I'm actually finalizing with now, that based on the statistics that we use to, to show how prepared you are for retirement, she's the only one who is at one or 5% uh, prepared for retirement. And that is on the financial angle, but in non-financial angle, some things she's not yet there. But financially, most people are not prepared for retirement. Most of them will score something between 30 and 60. Uh, but uh, for, for the first time, I have worked now with someone who is prepared, fully prepared for retirement. And, and, and there's some confidence that comes with that, some peace that comes with us, and even freedom that allows you to actually use your retirement well. So I'll, I'll be trying to I'll be sharing my insights on that uh, and, and just trying to show how you can and and I mean we can all prepare for retirement regardless of what uh, age we are in. But having worked with clients across all age groups, uh, my youngest client has been 23, but I'm just about to start working with a, uh, a client who is about to join university. I'm meeting her next week, so I don't know exactly her age, but I'm thinking she's probably between 18 and 20. And my oldest client is 82 years old. And I have found that there are certain things that the two uh, clients are exactly the same. And, and Ken alluded to it. Um, the certain knowledge levels where a 23 year old is no better than an 82 year old. And what this has led me to believe is that financial planning and retirement planning cannot happen by chance. You can't know how to manage your money without actually learning how to manage your money. And, and I like uh, likening it to any other skills that we teach our children. If you don't teach your child how to speak, they will not learn how to speak. It won't just happen. If you don't teach them how to walk, it won't just happen. So it's the same thing with financial and retirement planning. It's a skill that we all need and it doesn't come naturally to us. So it is important that we all learn. And uh, I also like giving an example of technology is not easy. I mean, uh, it's, it's not the easiest thing for everyone. Yeah, we have the young ones who seem to be born with that digital knowledge, but for majority of us, we've come to learn technology as it evolved. Yet, when you get a new phone, probably a brand you have never used, you, you somehow find time to learn how that technology works. And within no time, you're comfortable and you're using it well. I don't know why we don't do that with our finances. Yet, when you think as a Christian, there's a statement Jesus made that should actually make us um, be very concerned about our money management skill. When we read Matthew 6 uh, from 24 to 33, Jesus was talking about uh, our treasure, that um, where your treasure is, there your heart is. And as you continue reading, you actually realize he was talking about money. And what he says is that you cannot serve God and money. He doesn't say it is hard to serve God and money. He actually says it is either or, you can't serve God or money. So if we don't learn how to manage our money, we might find ourselves that our lives are all about money because we, we don't have that area in order. And as long as you continue serving money, it means your heart is not serving God. And, and we call that idol worship. So I would actually put this skill as one of the fundamental skills as you teach your child to walk, as you teach them to, 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 to communicate. I think money management should be the next thing because how they relate with money could actually have eternal impact. If they're not able to manage money well and their life focuses on that, then we know that they won't be able to, 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 to serve God. So today we'll, we'll look at, at that and see how we can actually prepare and ensure that uh, our lives are not just about making money and paying bills, but there's actually more to it. So in the flyer Ken shared, he talked of preparing for the longest holiday. And um, when he told me that, I said, I won't change that, but I normally don't talk of retirement as a holiday, but I decided, okay, let me just go and Google. What, what is the definition of a holiday? So I went to Google and these are the definitions it gave me. A period of time 
when you're not at work or school? What a description. Uh, most of us are either in school or at work. Uh, the other definition was an extended period of leisure and recreation, especially one spent away from home or in traveling. And I think that's one of the idea people have about um, retirement. They'll spend more time in leisure and recreation. Some people want to travel. I don't know if it's forever or it's for a period of time. The other definition was a period of time spent traveling and resting away from home. Uh, another one was a period of exemption or relief, uh, which I believe the pressures of work, the deadlines, the bosses and all that. And finally, I found an interesting one that said a holiday is a short period during which the payment of installments, taxes, ETC may be suspended. And I just found all those things uh, interesting and somehow in one way or the other, they can relate to retirement because yeah, we, we step down from active work uh, some people have to leave what they do, depending on the kind of work that they were doing. They might not be able to continue with it when they retire. Uh, some people will move away from where they spent their careers uh, because probably they were living in a location uh, because it was convenient to go to work. Some people actually travel. Uh, it's time to go visit loved ones and all that. And of course, the taxes reduce. Uh, we hope this government will not keep increasing them um, as, as, as they are threatening. But the point is you pay much less tax uh, in retirement. So there's, there's, some, there's a transition that goes on. There's a change that goes on. But when you think about a holiday, the connotation it gives us is a short period uh, of usually very present experiences. Uh, which is partly true uh, in the sense that there's a change and probably for good, for, I mean, less pressure, uh, a, a, a slower pace of life amongst other things. But it's not a short period anymore. It used to be, there was this theory that uh, people die within 10 years of retirement. That's no longer the case. Uh, retirement can be a very, very long time. So if, 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 for example, I was just to mention a little bit about retirement and, and so that you put this into context, and I have put this in the book, uh, Retirement Planning. Retirement actually comes in phases. Uh, retirement is not one long holiday. Retirement can be uh, broken down into three stages. So the first one is soon after you stop working. And here, when we talk of retirement here, we're only talking about one type of retirement, and this is old age, old, old age retirement. That is when you work until you reach the retirement age of your organization. So for government, it's 60 years. For many companies, it's 60 years. Some professions, it's more than that. And some people actually retire earlier. So the first phase is usually the go-go stage. And this stage is where you're physically and mentally active. That is, this is actually the stage where you are probably at your best because you have a physical energy, you still have some money, um, you still have networks amongst other things. And this season usually is quite busy. Um, and, and, and my clients who've just retired, they normally tell me, wow, I don't even feel like I'm retired because I'm so busy. Yes, and it's because now you have time to attend to the things that you could not attend to while you are still working. And, and some people want to start a business and they want to do a few things. So that's called a go-go stage. The expenses still remain a little bit high. Uh, you're moving up and about, you're doing your holidays and you're doing all those things, but that is usually a short period of about two to six months to two years. But then after that, life tends to move into another stage we call slow-go stage. And this stage tends to have a routine. Uh, you won't always do the things you are doing. If in the previous stage, you are going to see your shambas, you've never seen your plots, you've never seen, you won't keep seeing them every time. After you've seen all of them and decided what you want to do with them, you don't have to go back. So in this phase, you, there's reduced energy, life is falling into a predictable routine, you're cutting back on long distance uh, travel, you're no longer having fun uh, traveling very far. Uh, your expenses tend to come down because uh, your life is slowing down. Your children, hopefully they are now financially independent and so your expenses again come down and they probably can uh, fund some of your lifestyle or they can fund the travel you need to do to, to visit them. And we, this tends to be the longest period for people and we hope that this will be your longest period because you're still healthy, you're still um, energetic, uh, you can still do a lot though at a reduced pace. 
But again, after that, and, and we don't know how long this will, will take for you. Uh, it depends on a lot of things, your status of, I mean, your health status amongst other things, your age and all that. And then you enter into the final stage of retirement, which is basically what we say, the no-go stage. At this point, you don't want to go anywhere. So if travel, if holiday meant travel for you, you won't want to go anywhere. You don't want to get into a plane, you're tired with all that. You've advanced in age, your health probably is failing, and, 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 and you can, you're having some limitations into some of the things that you can do. Uh, but interesting, in this stage, your expenses tend to go by, I mean, to be very, very low because you're only dealing with basics. You're not buying clothes every day. You're not going anywhere. Uh, you have a home, probably a comfortable home. Uh, so expenses tend to go down with the exception of healthcare expenses, just healthcare expenses. That's what tends to go up. Uh, and we're assuming your children are independent at this point. But again, uh, at this point, depending on how long you live, for those who are living very long, one of the things that is coming up is that you might need caregiving. Now, if your children are global children and they are living everywhere, you might not be able to be, I mean, your children might not be able to take care of you themselves, but they might provide for caregivers or with time, and we are seeing that some people need to move into assisted living where they can't live by themselves, but they need assistance. So that season from go-go stage to no-go stage can be a long season. Um, and, and, and for us in the insurance industry, we normally say when, when we convert your savings into an income, the assumption we make is that you are going to live up to age 85. And we know some people are living way longer than that. So we are talking of, if you retired at 60, we are talking of 25 years in retirement. Now, you cannot be on holiday for a whole year, for two years, for 25 years. You will be so tired of that holiday because a holiday has this, if I mean, um, idea of you've been busy, you're tired and all that, and you're taking a break. And then you go back to something else. So I would want us to, to, re, to rethink uh, our, whole, our retirement and know that, yes, we will have slower pace of life, we'll have time to enjoy our families and all that, but it cannot be a holiday. And we look at what are some of the things that we need to think about and how we can prepare for them. Now, I would want to, to, to compare the traditional idea of retirement and the new retirement idea because the, the concept of work and retirement is changing. Now, the traditional uh, retirement used to be people would focus on careers or businesses, and, and many people would remain in the same career throughout their working life, or they would work with one employer or very few employers for the rest of their careers, and then they would retire in their 50s and 60s, and then there would be a hard stop on salary. So you, you, you no longer earn a salary. And for those who are saving through retirement benefits, or if the employer provided a pension, that salary would be replaced by, an in, by a pension, but only to a small extent, only a fraction of it. Um, the incomes were low generally previously, right now, especially as we have more people retire from private sector, people are retiring with good amounts of money. And for many people, their primary source of income then was that pension, all the activities they would do after they retire. That is, and many of them used to be things like farming. Some would try their hand in business, but their children were a main uh, source of support or it was expected that the children would provide for them. But again, in that time, the, the lifespan, especially after retirement was very short. Many people would die within 10 years or so. Now, the new concept of work and retirement is that people are not, uh, are, are not very focused on just one career. They want to try their hand in different things. So they might start in one area, but might end up in another area. Some people will try business. Like some of us, we were in career, went into business. Now we are going back to school. I don't know if we will go back to career or business, but people are more flexible now. Many people, are choosing to work for many employers by design. They are saying, I don't want to work for more than two employers. I mean, for, for more than two years with one employer. I cannot stay with one, one employer for five years and especially the younger generation. And the younger generation also, they have this, uh, what they are calling the FIRE ideology. That is financial independence, retire early. 
when you talk to majority of them, um, and, and, and we have some here, probably they'll tell us, they don't want to work until they are old. They want to make money and then stop working and do whatever they want to do and enjoy. There's what we are calling the gig economy. So you can actually go out there and do something when you need it. And you don't have to have a career all the time. That's how they are looking at it. I just need to go do what I want to do and then um, I, I, I can stop working. And then when I run out of money or when I need more money, I can actually go back. So for, 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 for this generation, the new retirement uh, will look like they'll have multiple sources of income. They will not have a hard stop on active income because they will be going back to work and uh, if the opportunity is there and do what they need to do. But unlike the older generation, the social fabric has broken down. Um, uh, some children are already struggling to be financially independent. And so they cannot rely on their children to actually provide for them. In fact, they're getting married later and they're starting families later. So what does that mean? Uh, by the time they reach retirement age, uh, that is the traditional retirement age, if they are working with an employer and they are saying you'll have to retire at 60, chances are they'll be having dependent children who are still in colleges because they started their families later. And in addition to that, because there's a longer lifespan, their parents will still be alive and they will be sort of dependent on them, whether financially or for caregiving, while at the same time, they will also, their children will be dependent on them. So they will be sandwiched and they'll have to provide for two generations. Yet, this is still the same generation that wants to retire early. And we find that uh, the, 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 there's a problem there. Uh, there's a problem there that needs to be addressed. So we've been talking about financial literacy, I mean, literacy in the industry, but now we are moving or adding what we are calling longevity literacy. We need to understand what longevity will mean for us. And I've alluded to some of those things because tradition at independence, I think the retirement age was around, I mean, people lifespan used to be around 50 years at independence, just about 60 years ago. Between then and now it has grown by almost 20 years and it is projected to grow very far. I mean, in another 30 years, it will probably be another 70, 80. A COVID came to disrupt that a bit, but people are generally living longer all over the world. So it means we are likely to live longer and our children will live actually longer. So what will that mean for their lives and also for preparation for retirement? So one, there are three main things that um, are happening, especially uh, with, with that generation the, from millennials going forward. Healthcare will become a very big, big issue because as you live longer, uh, old age diseases tend to come up, healthcare costs are going up, and they will need to take care of their own medicals. And as I said, their parents will probably be alive because they're also living longer. But in addition to that, their parents will probably require caregiving. And so this might mean that if they can't afford to hire someone to provide that caregiving, they will definitely have to take time and provide that care. So some people will have to leave employment to go and take care of their parents. And that will definitely impact their earnings and their preparation for their own retirement. So as a young person, it is important that you start thinking about that. You are likely to live longer, your parents will live longer. You might need to take care of them. Um, we are required to take care of them. God tells us to honor our parents. So how do you prepare to ensure that uh, when these things happen, you will not jeopardize your own retirement? Healthcare is one, but there's also meaningful engagement. Uh, millennials and the, 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 the later generation, one of the things they're very keen about is to do work that has a purpose. When they look at um, our parents, the, the, the baby boomers and, the gen and generation X, Many of them have worked in careers, not because they really enjoy what they're doing, but because they were driven by the need to provide for their families. This generation is not buying into that. If something doesn't make sense to them, they are very comfortable to leave their jobs. If something doesn't make sense, if something does not impact society, they really have a problem with that. 
And while uh, the younger, the older generation might find that uh, of a problem, I, I actually think that the, the, the younger generation have a point in the sense that God wired us in certain ways. He gave us certain passions. And it would be best if you're able to operate in those giftings. And so uh, while the younger people will quit, I do not encourage them to quit before they find that, uh, that they need to put their interest in. But what I would encourage them is to grow in their self-awareness so that as they finish college and as they start their careers, they're getting to know what their talents are, their giftings, their interests, their passions, so that even as they seek uh, further education and as they seek employment, they're looking for those jobs that will have meaning. And that will give them the motivation they need to continue working and to uh, to save and, and even uh, do very well because they're operating in their gifting. So, that might be something that might work well for them or might not work well for them. So depending on how they approach it and how they navigate through that. And of course, the third aspect of longevity literacy is financial resilience. The fact that we are living longer means that we need to provide for ourselves for longer. And so we must have the knowledge to invest what we are making now because we will not only need it for this season, but we'll also need it for the next season. So getting to know what are those needs that you need to prepare for will be very, very, very important. So it's not just financial literacy, it's also longevity literacy. Now, for those who are in business and um, or management, we, we know about uh, Peter Drucker. And this is what Peter Drucker says. People now have two lives, life one and life two, and they're overprepared for life one and underprepared for life two. And there's no university for the second half of life. What, what does he mean here? He means that, um, like I said, at independence, people used to die in their forties, in their fifties. That was just one life. But today, after your fifties, you, you have actually another life. So our education system prepares us for life one. We, we are very clear on the careers we want to pursue. We are very clear on the jobs that we want to do. But no one prepares us, except now me who is joining that space, um, for life two. Uh, somehow our lives, uh, everyone tells us what to do to start our careers, but no one tells us what to do after we end our careers. So it is important that we start preparing for life too. And I'm very glad that there are many people now who've come up, done a lot of research on this area. And now we have a lot of resources to learn about how to prepare for second half. If you've never read a book called Half Time, and in your mid thirties going forward, I would really, really encourage you to read. The book is by Bob Buford. Um, he's, he's a Christian, he's written um, about the second half of life, which can be triggered by many things, but retirement is one of them. Basically, when you have a new season of life, and it's, it's quite a, a long season of life where um, the, the way you are running things that in the first half will no longer work. You, are prob you probably don't have an opportunity to work in an organization or things have changed, but you still have life to live. So how do you prepare for that? So when we look at uh, all those things I have talked about, then for sure retirement is no holiday because it's a long season of life and it has a lot to be done. So just like a holiday, we'll still compare it to a holiday, though it's very different. You have to learn, you have to decide where will you spend your retirement. When you choose to go on holiday, you decide where you're going. Am I going to coast? Am I going to... To, to Mount Kenya, am I going to Dubai? You decide on a venue. Same case with retirement. You have to decide where are you going to retire. When you choose to go on holiday, you decide what you will do during that holiday. Are you just going to sit in the beach and enjoy the sun? Or are you going to tour around the area? You actually come up with an itinerary from day one to the last day, including the days you just choose to, to just rest but you have an itinerary of what you're going to do. For you to enjoy your holiday, you plan it very, very well. But most importantly, you always avail the funds to fund that holiday. Uh, people enjoy holidays because the money is already there to be spent. It was, it was, it was, it was uh, you look for it and you put it aside and now it is time to utilize those resources. The same case with retirement. 
once you decide where you're going to retire, what you're going to do in retirement, then the next thing you have to decide is how are you going to finance that retirement or how are you going to finance that season of life? There are certain things that are beyond your control. You don't know how long you're going to be in retirement, but we all pray for long life. So I always ask people to say, okay, fine. You say you want to live long. How, if God granted your wishes, how long would you want to live? And assume that's how long you're going to live. And then ask yourself, uh, do I have the finances to fund this retirement? So for young people who want to retire in their 40s, it means you might have another 45 years in retirement going by the insurance standards of how long people, I mean, average how long people live. So if you live for 40 years, that includes about um, between age zero and 22, 24, you're in school. That means you'll only work for about 16 years. Then those 16 years, uh, we'll need to fund the lifestyle then, but also fund another lifestyle for 45 years. And, and I think you have some decisions to, to actually make. So I think before I progress, I would want to know if, if there's a question or something somebody would want me to respond to, uh, just to make sure that we are together. Any question or comment? Are we together or am I alone? Yeah, we are there. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I think you're all very quiet. I just wanted to make sure we are together. All right. So we've established that um, retirement is a long season and we need to prepare for it. And sometimes we, uh, we ask ourselves then, okay, how do we prepare? When do we prepare? So we know that our God is a God of seasons. He takes us through seasons in our lives and our life cycle is also, ha also has three major seasons. So we normally classify our lives into three seasons. The first one is growth and development, which is basically zero to about 24 years. This is the period uh, by the time when people finish college. And during that season, children are dependent on their parents or their, um, or they are what, um, the people who take care of them, they are, they, are, they are guardians, basically the people who choose to take care of them. That season, you are financially dependent. But it's, it's, it's a season, it's a foundation season that I think based on my knowledge now and my experience now, we enable our children to gain skills in everything else, but we sort of forget to actively, just like we, we, we carefully teach them how to communicate, how to manage their time. We forget to teach them how to manage their finances. And I think this season, we need to use it very, very well to enable them to acquire the knowledge that they need. And, and, and if you read Proverbs, it talks a lot about acquiring knowledge, acquiring wisdom. And if you may just put two, two scriptures, Proverbs 18, 15 says, an intelligent heart acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. We tend to focus on certain areas and then ignore others. I think when it talks about knowledge, it means on the knowledge that we need to live our lives well. So I would encourage the young ones, take time to learn about finances. That is one skill you need for the rest of your life. Yet uh, we wait too long uh, to actually learn it. Proverbs 27, uh, 12 says, um, okay, sorry, not, 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 not Proverbs 20, 27, 12, sorry, that is about uh, retirement. So I, I think that's my guiding principle, seek knowledge. Um, you need it, it will guide you. Like we said, many people lose their way just because they don't have the knowledge. And I have seen it with, with all levels of my clients. After growth and development, the next season where many of the adults here are in is what we call the economic productive season. And this is probably between age 20s and 70s or wherever you, you, you live or work. And, and this season can be short, it can be long, depending on various factors. Um, you can lose your ability to generate an income for various reasons. You could be sick, um, you could be in an accident, and, and you can no longer do what you train to do. Or you could even lose the opportunity to work because 
the organizations you are working with are folding up or an industry is being wiped out, many reasons would result would lead to that. So we don't know how long we are going to be economically productive. But during this season, then we must manage our money wisely. Because like I said, what you do with your money in this season when you're financially independent will determine whether the next season you're going to be financially independent or financially dependent. So when we think about money um, and when we, we know that God is the one who created us, put us on this earth and he allocated us with the resources that we can have. I always say that the amount of resources you can ever get um, has already been determined by God. You can get less because if you're lazy, you might not get, but God ordains the resources that each one of us will manage. Yet he has given us a lot of uh, wisdom on how to manage our finances. Somebody did a research on scriptures and found that of, of the 41 parables, 40, 41 parables, 11 of them talk about money and possessions. And, and that's a very significant number. Uh, of the Bible scriptures, 2,450 talk about money and possession. So we, we, we cannot claim not to have guidance on how to manage our money. And there's a gentleman called Ron Blue who studied scriptures and looked at them and said he can uh, summarize the principles of managing money into five. And even if you don't pick anything else from this uh, 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 webinar, I hope you will Look at these five principles, five biblical principles of managing money. And if you manage your money uh, that way, you'll actually do well financially. So the first principle, nothing new, nothing you've never had, is spend less than you earn. And I will not expound much on that because it basically means you can't spend all you earn because you need to put aside some money uh, to, to take care of tomorrow and other things. The second one, which amongst Kenyans, I think it's a big problem, is create liquidity or maintain liquidity or a margin. Now, many of us try to do in, to invest and uh, we have very good intentions. But one of the challenges that we find ourselves in is investing in very illiquid assets. And there's nothing completely wrong with uh, investing in illiquid assets, but we need to maintain a certain level of liquidity. As a country, we are saying now we are broke. It doesn't mean we don't have wealth. It doesn't mean we don't have businesses. All it means is that we don't have cash when it is needed. And that's the same case with us as individuals. We need to ensure that we have liquidity. We maintain some assets in liquid form. That could be in form of cash, fixed deposits, uh, certificate of deposits. You could put your money in money market, treasury bills. Those are all liquid investments in the sense that if you needed that money, you'll be able to get it sooner. Now, if you don't do this, then you'll always run into problem. And one of the problems that you'll, you'll get into will, you're going to, to, to not to, 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 to do well with the principle number three, which says avoid debt. To a large extent, majority of people get into debt because of poor planning and also because of they did not maintain some liquid assets. So when emergencies happened, they had nothing to take care of it and they had to take care of the emergency. God's word tells us to avoid debt. And I, at this point, I think I would want to, to emphasize as believers, it is very, very important that we discern the difference between godly wisdom and worldly wisdom. We are told not to conform to the ways of this world. If you go to many circles, people say you should always have a debt, please take debt. But when you read scripture, it actually says the exact opposite. It says avoid debt. It doesn't say debt is sin, but there's nothing positive scriptures talk about debt. And amongst many, many, many reasons why debt is, is wrong is because one, we, we, we don't trust in God to actually provide. When you choose to go into debt, into some form of debt, and, and today's talk, topic is not about debt, so I'll not go deeper, but, but I actually feel like Christians, we've missed the point here. When you take debt today to take care of a need, um, and I hear many people say, if I don't that, buy that piece of land uh, today, the price will go up and I'll not be able to afford tomorrow. Basically, what you are saying is, I don't trust God will be there to take care of me tomorrow. So it's 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 we rob God the opportunity to provide for us, and we also also show that we really don't trust that He'll be there for us. 
So that's principle number three, avoid debt, avoid use of debt. The fourth principle, set long-term goals. And some of those long-term goals is retirement or things that you will need to do five, 10, 15 years from now. Because if you just think about managing money with a current perspective, just like driving. I remember when I was learning how to drive, I used to drive very, very slowly. Actually, maybe a month into already having a driving license. And I was, I was always, people were always hooting at me and I kept on wondering, okay, how will I ever get over this fear? I remember talking to a gentleman who used to take our kids to school. And I asked him, how can I overcome this? And he told me, when you drive, how do you drive? And it turned out that I just used to look right in front of the bonnet, just uh, the end of the car. And I didn't have that clear vision ahead. And that made me drive slowly. So he told me, focus way ahead, focus in where you're going. And my speed improved. And I think that will apply as well in finances. When you think about um, the long-term goals that you need to achieve, you might actually change some of the decisions that you'll make about spending a thousand shillings today or 10,000 shillings today. It doesn't mean that you don't live today, but it means that as you manage your money, you also need to think long-term so that you're able to make better quality decisions. And finally, the last principle is to give generously. That's how we are supposed to manage our finances during the financially independent season. You spend less than you earn, you'll have money to maintain liquidity, you'll be able to take care of emergencies, so chances are you'll avoid that, you'll be able to invest for short-term and long-term goals, and you'll also have something uh, to give generously. So all these principles are intertwined. And I encourage you to look at how you're managing your finances today and see which principle are you following well and which principle are you not following well. In my new book, I have addressed these principles in details and especially with a perspective of, of a young person who is starting in their careers. And then um, as, you, as, as you manage money and as you move towards the end of your economically productive season, Proverbs 27, 12 tells us, a prudent person sees danger and hides himself but a simple go on and suffer for it. The danger we see here is that uh, soon we will be out of employment, will not be in a position to, to work because our energy is failing, uh, we are becoming older, the opportunities might not be there. That's the danger. And we don't want to become dependent on other people. So we need to hide. And basically that means we need to prepare for that season. We need to do something about it. But the fools or the simpleton, as the Bible talk, calls them, they just go on and they say life will take care of itself and they actually go and suffer for it. So don't waste your economically productive years. Um, it's a season where you can multiply what God has granted you, but it's also a, a season where you can destroy wealth as opposed to building it. And then when we get to retirement, the third season, um, in Kenya, we normally say early retirement is from age 50 and above. How you spend your economic productive years will determine how you will be in this season. Now, some people during the economic productive season, they, 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 they build their lifestyle to be very, very high. And when they retire now, they really have to reduce their lifestyle. I mean, drastically reduce how, how, how they live, sometimes resulting into mental challenges, mental health challenges, depression for some people. Um, it, it is important that you think what kind of retirement do you want to live and don't allow your positions or possessions to, 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 to be the main basis of your identity. Our identity is supposed to be in Christ, not in the possessions that we have. Our, uh, our worth, in fact, there's a scripture that says that our worth and our value is not in the possessions that we have. But many people have set traps for themselves by living this exorbitant lifestyle that they cannot sustain into retirement. Yet, God has told us uh, that um, he will take care of us even in the old age. So even as we prepare and even as we manage our money, we also need to ensure that, yes, God will be there to, to, to take care of us, but we should also not set ourselves up for trouble. 
Now, while the world will retire us from our work, our employers, the government, and all that because of limited uh, positions, in God's economy, there's nothing like retirement. And if you've read your Bible, you probably have only come across the word retirement once. My version only has once. And that word retirement is only in Numbers 8, 23 to 26. And the meaning of retirement in that scripture is not like we normally do it today. And this is what it says. The Lord said to Moses, this applies to the Levites. Men 25 years old or more shall come to take part in the work at the tent of the meeting. But at the age of 50, they must retire from their work, from their regular service and work no longer. But as you continue reading that scripture, what it normally says is that those who are 50 and above, they were not retiring to go back home and stay, but they were supposed to remain in the service to mentor the young ones. What does that mean? Their work changed. It did not end. We know serving in the tent of meeting was hard labor. They were sacrificing animals. They were doing things that required physical strength. So there was that transition that came, but the younger people who are coming in needed to be mentored and trained and, 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 and guided on what they need to do. And that is what these people who are 50 years old and above uh, retired to, because you know the Levites did not have land. So even when they, they, they left the service of the tent of the meeting, they did not go to start farming, no. They still continued serving and their portion was provided for. So what am I saying? God does not expect us to retire. Yes, he expects us to change what we do or to slow down what we are also calling the retirement. You, are, you can be rehired into something else, but it does not mean that you stop and do nothing. Uh, we've also read about David. We are told when David accomplished his purposes for this generation, he rested. So we are supposed to continue living. And when we finish what God created us to do, then we will rest. So the concept of retiring and just sitting down and watching your grandchildren play and watching your animals, that's not a biblical concept. You could retire from what you do on a daily basis, but you don't retire from God's work. So even as you think about finances, I would want you to a large extent think about what will you do in retirement? Remember the holiday we say there's an eating ready. Um, you'll go to this place today, tomorrow you'll do this, the next day you'll do this until you come back home. So if you have 25 years in retirement, what will you do with that time? As we know, most people retire when they are most experienced, uh, they've gained a lot of experience at their peak, when probably they have a lot to offer. The only thing that is reducing is their physical energy. But in terms of everything else, they are at their best. Yet they, 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 they leave all that and they go and do nothing. Do nothing in the sense that they don't utilize the knowledge and the wisdom God has given them. And what you know is that God takes you through experiences, not so that you can bury all that under a debe or something, but you're supposed to use that and to serve humanity. So from my work experience, uh, the one area that I'm seeing that many people, and especially professionals, what they are lacking is preparation in terms of what they will do with their time. So they live and, and, and they, they look confused. They feel lost because they can no longer do what they were doing, but they are ill-prepared in terms of what they will do. And they end up wasting their most healthy and energetic years. Remember we said immediately after you retire, that's when you are most energetic, that's when you are at your healthiest in most cases, because that's when you are at your youngest age in retirement. So if you don't plan what you will do in retirement, then you'll waste the first few years trying to figure it out. And what I have seen with my clients, most of whom happen to be professionals, people who have been in management position, in C-suit positions, anyone who retired from 2019 without clarity on what they want to do in retirement, none of them has found what to do, what they need to do in retirement. So their, their greatest concern is not financial, actually. Their greatest concern is lack of meaning. Some are playing golf. But yes, they play golf, but they say they're not happy with how their life is going. They feel like life is not productive. They feel like they're doing nothing. And so I would encourage you, no matter what age you are, start thinking of 
yeah, this is what I'm doing. I'm building a career. And this is something probably I can do even into retirement or probably at a certain point during your career, you'll need to transition into something else that you can carry on into retirement. And for some, you need to think about something that you'll change into as you retire. So it depends with who you are, where you are, the level of your self-awareness and, and, and what you think God actually put you on this earth to do. So I don't just talk about finances. Actually, for me, when I work with clients, basically we look at what kind of life do you want to live both now and in retirement. And so we do more of life planning. And then we, we look at how do we finance this uh, life that you have set? Because our lives are not about money. We have a life to live and we need to fund that lifestyle. And money management needs to be looking for money to fund a, a, a specified lifestyle. So when it comes now to preparing for retirement, then we have to think seriously about what lifestyle do we want to live in like retirement? What life do we want to live in retirement? What does that entail? It means, what will I do with my time? What will I do with my family? Um, what are those things that I will do that will bring meaning to life? And then you, you define that lifestyle, we cost it, we take care of inflation and we find out what investments do we need to make to be able to generate the income you need to define that lifestyle. Now, for a young person who is about to leave school, they are wondering, what is this lady talking about? But I would want you to think about, you want to retire early. And uh, for many people, maybe probably the idea they had is retire early and travel around the world. What we have said is that you can't travel around the world all the time. It will become boring. Even the richest people don't do that. They actually take a break, go on holiday, but come back to something. So even as you choose to retire early, then you have to think about how will I spend my time in a meaningful way for the rest of my life. And you can actually build those two lives in a parallel way. Because for example, if you're if you're training to become an IT professional, but you feel like God has called you to do something different, you don't want to do other things when you retire. You don't want to do software engineering until you're 50. Maybe you want to stop at age 40. Then you have to ask yourself, based on the information you have today, what would you want to do then? Uh, I mean, after, after you've done your software engineering or you've done your coding and all those things, what would you want to do? And as you think through, uh, as you, you think about it, then you might realize that there are certain skills or competencies that you need to develop that will enable you to perform well in that other area. Hence, as you build your career, you'll also be looking for opportunities to grow those skills. The same case with those who are older or approaching retirement or in their mid careers, it is very, very critical you, 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 you find out what will you do in retirement? Where do you want to live? Is it near your family, away from your family? Who will be your social support? Um, and, and, and what will you do? And then we define that lifestyle. We can actually cost it. We can look at what, uh, where will you be living? And will you have owned a home? Or will you be paying rent? If you'll be paying rent based on today's rent, how much rent is that? What will you be eating? Which Who will be living with you? Will you be having your children around or will they have finished school? Or will you still be supporting them even if they're in school? And you can actually cost that lifestyle. And, that's, and then once you cost it, we can project. Uh, by the time you're 50, based on a certain assumption, assumed inflation rate, what will your budget look like? And then we ask ourselves, where will that income come from? If you'll still be working, you can actually project your income and say, okay, uh, if all goes well, maybe I'll be earning this amount of money, but probably there's a deficit. Where will it come from? And then we start looking at how we can invest your resources today to ensure that when those incomes are needed in future, you actually have them. So this sometimes requires, you might require help to do this. Um, you're basically creating a strategic plan for your life. And like we know, some of our organizations, they can't do their own strategic um, planning. They normally engage a professional to come and do that. We are not all skilled in everything. So you might actually need to work with a financial planner or a retirement planner to help you clarify what you want to achieve with your life 
and the components of that. They will bring the insights they have learned from working with various clients and they will add value to that process. And then once you have that clear vision, and, and, and for those who might not want to work with a, with a financial planner, I normally tell them to do this. Assume life turned out perfectly and you're 90 years old and you're looking back and you are saying that has been a good retirement. I would want you to describe that life you have lived. What would that be at age 90? So you probably retired at 60. So you're talking about how you have spent the last 30 years. If you write that down, it can become very, very easy to cost it. And uh, we are able to look at the kind of money that you need. Once you have that clear vision, without which you will not be able to plan for a good retirement. You will be drifting because you, you don't have a clear target. Uh, when people start doing something, you'll be attracted to what they're doing. When other people start moving in the opposite direction, it will look appealing to you because you're not clear on what you want to achieve for retirement. So I always say, gain that vision, sit down, spend time, clarify what you want. And, and like architects do, build a model for that life, clearly define it, and then it will become easy to actually achieve it. Then once we have that clear vision, we normally look at what we call the risk assessment. What could go wrong? You have this perfect image of retirement that you want to have. What are some of the things that can derail you from achieving that? Of course, there are obvious things like job loss. Uh, you might lose your job, so the income you are planning to invest is not there. You could be unwell due to an illness or an accident and you're disabled. And so that interrupts your financial plan. Uh, marital status do change. Some people are widowed early. And so probably you had a two income household. Now all of a sudden it's a one income household. And that could also happen because of separation and divorce. Some people might, might remarry uh, after widowhood or separation and divorce. And that means now probably their family will grow. The other party might come with another family. And some other people could become dependent. Your parents could live very long, like we talked about. Uh, or you might need to take on other people because you probably lost relatives and loved ones and you need to take care of their children. It's important to look at all those things. We will not have full visibility of, of the things that will happen to us. But with the knowledge we have of financial planning, we can actually plan for such eventualities. If it is job loss, you can actually take income protection insurance. We have companies that give you an income protection. Should you lose your job due to redundancy, they actually pay you an income. Uh, my la the last client we took such a cover, her net income was 400,000 and she was paying a premium of about 1,000 shillings per month. And, and, and in event of job loss due to redundancy, she would actually receive uh, that 400,000 for six months. So there, there are things we can do about the risks that we face. If it is disability, we have insurances that you can take that can provide you with either disability income should you be permanently disabled or even temporarily disabled if you're unable to work for a few weeks to, to two years. Um, there is no insurance against um, uh, there's no insurance on offer against a marital breakdown and all these things. But to manage your risk of marital status, one of the things, especially for separation and divorce, you can actually invest in your families, plan to spend time with your family, build your relationships as opposed to neglecting them. So if, if something is very valuable to you, you will actually find time to, to, to do what is necessary. So there's no insurance, but you can divorce proof your marriage by actually doing what you need to do. Uh, if you have dependents and, and, and if you come from a family where if your father is still alive and you're 60, chances are you'll also live that long. Um, you, you, you need to ensure that you have the kind of insurances that will provide for you even, uh, will provide for you for longer. So it might mean that you need to, to, to actually have certain products like what you call deferred annuities which you can invest in earlier to provide an income for your parents should they live long and need your help. And, and by investing early, you might put in a million today, but in, in another 10, 15 years, it could actually give you a, a, almost a 300% return on the amount that you invested. And that will come in handy in future. So these are risks that you can manage and there are solutions in the market, and most of them are very, very affordable solutions, just that you might not be 
probably aware of. Now, with all those things, you've, you've, you've cast a vision, you've looked at what could go wrong. Then for those who are young ones, and not even young ones, everyone, wherever you are, there are various things you can do to boost your income, to grow your income. If you're young, you need to advance in your skills, you need to, uh, to gain experience, you do need to give your best at work so that you grow your income. Um, if, if For those who are also in employment, uh, regardless of what age you are, there's so much you can do to improve your earning ability. Many of us just think about doing side hustles. And I always say that for majority of us, when we do side hustles, it's actually, in many cases, not all, but many people, it's actually something that um, sabotages your own growth in the sense that you don't have enough time for that side hustle, you don't have enough time for your work, so you end up losing on both. You're not progressing in your career because you're not fully there, but your business is also not thriving because you're also not fully there. So you might realize that probably I need to focus on my career and build my income there, or maybe I need to step out of my employment and focus on my business and grow my income there. So depending on what you're doing, it is important that you look at the full investment that uh, is required to succeed in whichever area that you are in. For young ones, uh, I think many of you have been lied to that employment is not a good thing, but it is important to know that not all of us are gifted to be entrepreneurs. God has given us different gifts so that we may all, if everybody uses their gift, then no one will lack in anything. So there's some people who are gifted in being business people. There's some people who are not gifted in being uh, business people. They will not thrive, they will not do well. So get to know yourself. Self-awareness is very, very important. There are many tests that can actually help you to know how God has wired you. And one of, this, one of the tests that we use, I use with my clients and, and probably uh, anyone can do is, is, is the Gallup test. It's called, a, it's called Strength Finder. Uh, that test helps you to know your natural gifting. So if you notice that um, for some of us, we just did it as we were preparing for, for going back to school. And for me, I'm a learner. I enjoy learning. And that is in alignment with what I am going to do next. But if, if you've been lied to about business and you feel like you really don't want to be employed, but uh, the gift of, or, I mean, you don't have that gift, it's among your least giftings, then you might need to reconsider your position. Some people probably they have that gift and they haven't explored, then you might actually want to exploit. So um, employment is not a bad thing. Some of the skills you need in the business world probably you need to learn them in an employment setup, in an organization where they have experience and those kind of things. And then at the right time, you can step out and actually go into business. If you know for sure that you are supposed to be in business, then well and good, go and utilize your gifting and actually thrive wherever you are. So as you're doing all these things, you're growing your incomes, you're investing in the right uh, in the right products. And remember when I say investing in the right products, and today I didn't want us to go to specifics, those products or those investments will, will be determined by the lifestyle that you want to lead. So someone who has a lot of income needs, let's say you have dependents, aging parents, you're taking care of, your children are still in school, for you, your income needs are very high. You need to ensure that you're investing your money in assets that generate an income, not assets that uh, will give you an income five years from now, yet you need the income now. So you might find yourself going into annuities, going into bonds, going into rental property, investments that give you an income, as opposed to someone who has one child who is about to finish school. The parents are still young and they are financially independent. They might never need their, their, their help. And that person, their needs are totally, totally different. So they might actually invest more in land for speculative purposes because they don't have immediate uh, liquidity needs. So your, 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 your vision or the kind of life that you want to lead determines the investment that you make. But having said that, it is very, very important that you keep looking at where you have invested and see how are these investments serving me today 
and how are they serving me for the season that's ahead? So if you're in your 20s, you need to ask yourself, um, where am I putting my money and how is it serving me today? Am I, am I struggling? Well, probably I have investments that will probably be helping me. But I'm also entering a season where I'll, I'm likely to start a family. So I'll have children who will need to go to school and probably my parents will be retiring. I don't know if they'll have enough money. How can I step in and assist if called upon to? So your investment is not just because an investment is doing well, but it is because of the transitions that are ahead and, and, and you can look and see the kind of income needs that you need to have. So we need to keep re-looking at our asset portfolio and rebalance it. Maybe in the previous season, I didn't need a lot of income. Now I'm going to a season where I need a lot of income. Then I might need to buy, sell off some pieces of land and convert that money into money market because I need to pay school fees or probably into a bond that will give me income every six months and I'll use that money to provide for my parents or whatever it is. Our challenge, and especially for many of us, is that sometimes we acquire assets and we say we're investing for the future, but that future never comes. So we're always acquiring more, always acquiring more, even when we're in debt. Instead of using our resources to pay debt, we are just holding on to these resources as we look for more resources to take care of our needs. I think when, when God gave us that parable of the rich fool, I, I think many of us sometimes end up in, in such a situation where we are just holding. Instead of using what God has given us for our good and even for the other people who might need those resources, we are just holding them and, and, and we are not um, using them for the purposes that we even prayed for. So reviewing your asset portfolio, depending on the situation where you are rebalancing them. But when we get to retirement, liquidating those investments to provide us with an income. I come from a community and I think our community is, is also very close to some, to Ken Aosa's community. We tend to like land and uh, we have very many old people who retire with huge chunks of land, but when they are sick, they call people for harambees because they don't have the liquidity that they need. So it's important that we know when do we liquidate these investments and when do we convert them into resources that we can be able to use so that we thrive in our retirement. So it doesn't matter what age you are in, the investments you are making, they are meant to I normally say, make your investments based on goals. I normally do what you call goal-based investing, where you, you match an investment to a specific goal. And so if the season comes where now you need to convert it into cash, please do. That's what we do with retirement benefits and pension. Uh, on retirement, it is converted into a monthly income because that is what it was designed for and that was the purpose. And now is the time to start earning that income. So... Those are the main steps of preparing for retirement. And I've done this mainly at a high level as opposed to going to very, very specifics. And as you can see, then this calls for active preparation for retirement throughout your career. These are not things you can wait until you're 14. You have to start doing them. Immediately you start working because you're not only thinking about now or the next decade, but you're thinking long-term. Uh, regardless of where the uh, people are in their careers, you cannot disregard retirement because once you leave active work, like the Levites who are serving in the tent of meeting and in the temple later, you will be reassigned. God will require you to use the knowledge and skills you have used, you have acquired to actually impact other people. Maybe not in the same area you are doing, but maybe in something else. But if your finances are not in order, you will never be able to do that. So let's, let's, let's look at it that the, 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 there's a verse we need to think a lot about, which is Ephesians 2.10, that talks about the works that God created us to do. Uh, if, I, if I may try to, to, to remember from memory, it says, for we are God's masterpiece created anew in Christ Jesus to do the works he prepared for us in advance that we may walk in them. So the question is, sometimes during our careers, we might not be able to walk in those works that God prepared for us. 
And many people feel that way. I think I was made for more. I think there's something else I should be doing. But because of the pressures, you have to provide for your family and other things. You're not able to do them during your careers. But retirement presents an opportunity to actually do that. It doesn't have to be retirement. For the young ones, I would encourage you to seek, to seek and to know those things now so that you may be in that, you, you may actually pursue that area. For those who are in their careers, if you are feeling that you need to be somewhere else or you think God created you to do more, again, that is the direction you need to work towards. And for those who retire, it is an opportunity to actually serve God in the things that he actually created you to do. But like I have said, you will not be able to serve God if your finances are not in order, if you do not have food on the table, if you do not have a medical care or you cannot afford to go see a doctor in your old age. So let's, let's live our lives um, purposefully, uh, knowing very well that we were created to do much more than just to pay bills, to take our children to, to, to school. Um, that's important, but it's not all. And so we need to plan not only for the life when you are in active employment, but we also need to plan for the rest of our lives so that once we, we do what we've been called or we were created to do, then we can rest and, and, and having done that and, being, and receive the good and faithful um, servant uh, from God. So in a nutshell, um, create a roadmap that can evolve with time but make sure that you, you build those lives together. As you're building your career, know that this career is coming to an end and another life will start. And don't wait until it's over to start the other one. You can actually build them together. If you need help, seek help. There are people, I'm not the only one who does this. There are many people who can help you with this, but I would be happy to help you with that. A good place to start is to read um, my book, Retirement Planning. I tried to work on that just to help people have a basic understanding of the things to prepare for. And in that book, I have gone into details. I will try and share the screen just for you to see the title of the book so that uh, in future, or if you'd like to have it, you can see it. So that's the book, it's called Retirement Planning, A Holistic Guide to a Satisfying Season. It's in a few bookshops. It's in, it's in um, uh, kibangabooks.com and it is also in Nuria stores in town, nuriastores.com. Uh, but we also sell it directly. Um, the normal price usually is 950, but now it is going for, for, for this meeting, I will offer it at 800 shillings. But um, Ken also alluded to a book that I have just written. It came out uh, last Wednesday. Uh, so yes, it's not even in the bookshops yet. And I wrote this book because I realized when you title a book retirement planning, the young people will not read it. Yet they are the ones who would benefit the most from it. So I thought of writing a book that will probably be more detailed and the approach I took is, if you are graduating from college today or from, yeah, from college you're going to start working today, what are those basics that you need that would set you up to managing your finances well? So it addresses everything from um, getting to be self-aware, what is my financial personality? What is my risk profile? How does my background affect how I manage my money? to talking about various investments, how to evaluate investments, how do you calculate return on investments, how do you compare them, all the way to how insurances work, and also sort of helping you make the first steps of coming up with a financial plan. What are the first things that you need to do? What, after you build an emergency fund, what is the next thing that you need to do? So I would encourage you to find time to read. So if you're interested in any of those, uh, please pick my number. Uh, you can reach us, uh, you can reach out to us, uh, you can send us a message or a WhatsApp, and later when I'm back, we can even talk. So I really hope that uh, you've been able to get a broad idea about retirement planning, um, what to plan for. 
Um, I didn't talk about the specifics because uh, that has a lot to do with individuals, uh, specific individuals and what they want to achieve in retirement. But I believe that many of us can actually prepare well and it doesn't matter where you are. Um, even if you have two years to retirement, doing something about it will help. But there's a lot of help that uh, you can find. The other thing I have noticed is that many people are managing their finances well. They're just not confident. So sometimes you just need someone to tell you, yes, you're on the right track. But uh, half of my clients, I normally tell them they are worried well. It's only that they're not optimizing what they have, but they can, uh, they're actually doing a good job. So I want to end there and take uh, questions now. Wow, wow. I thought I understood some of these things. That's a lot of information. Eh? <laughs> I'm sure we have all been blessed. This is really good knowledge. I have learned a lot of things I didn't know. I'm sure all of us have learned quite a number of things. Looks like this is just an introduction. It looks like you're going to talk to us very many more times. But uh, time is really, uh, we are really run out of time. Uh, whether there is maybe one or two burning questions because we really need to close. But I think uh, Rose has given us very, very solid uh, ideas, concepts, and even books to read and uh, start, and then this is available to, to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Any any question or any maybe I don't know any comment? Maybe because of time, I think uh, let's think about what she has said. She has also given resource materials to read. I'm sure she can talk to us later. We are going to just uh, probably finish now. And I saw Pastor Jean in the room. Pastor Jean, after Mary gives us our closing song, you'll say something and then pray in closing. Uh, thank you, Sister Mary. Thank you, Ross. I really appreciate it. I know it was very, 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 uh, very, I know you are very busy where you are right now, but uh, we thank God that you could find time to give us this amazing uh, treasures of information. Thank and you, I know when you were saying uh, retirement, plan, uh, retirement planning in a godly way, I was wondering what is, so now, now I understand. Thanks. <laughs> right. Thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah, Sister Mary. Okay, I'll sing song number 151. Uh, um, Nimbo Crystal. <coughs> he leadeth me. <coughs> Oni yongo zamo kozi dipo na mi hufurai ni enda popo te na pu ata ni yongo zapapo.
tayari kupokea Niki isha kazi chini sita kimbia mauti kushinda ni yaki ku niki ongozwa na baba kuongoza unishika kwa mkono wa hakika nita Kristo ani yongo zae kuongo za unishika kwa mkono wa hakika nitanda mwana naye Kristo ani Be blessed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I just want to extend a, a special thank you um, to our presenter, Rose. We are extremely grateful to you. Uh, as a church family, we just want to thank you for the um, immense um, wealth of knowledge that you have given us uh, this evening. Uh, had it not been for time, we would have continued. Uh, but we will definitely be looking for uh, another opportunity for you to share with us uh, the knowledge that the Lord has gifted you with. So we thank you for the, your ministry and we pray uh, that the Lord will continue to bless you and uh, expand your territory so that you can bless other people with this knowledge. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for that which we have learned this evening. We thank you that you have placed um, Rose in our path, that Lord, you have used her this evening to be able to be a blessing to us. May the words that she has spoken, the knowledge that she has shared uh, be the seeds that go and sprout into great and mighty plants, O oh Lord, that we may know how to not just thrive for those who are already in retirement, but also to plan for those of us who are looking that direction. We pray that Lord, the knowledge that has been given will allow us not just to, um, to do well and to plan better, but also Father, that we may be able to do all of these things so that we can serve you in the way that you desire to be served, O oh, Father. That it may draw us closer to you in the way that we, we plan, in the way that we trust you, in the way that we are used of you, in helping other people. Father, we thank you for everyone who is here and even uh, those who are listening online. And we just pray that you would be with them, with each one in a very special way. I pray that you would um, demonstrate that you are Jehovah Jireh, the ultimate provider. So where we may not have known and therefore we could not do better, we ask that Father, you would take our uh, knowledge now and help us to be able to do better as we move forward. Um, we ask that Lord, you would um, be with each family. You know their challenges, you know their opportunities, you know uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. And we just ask that Lord in all things, you will be able to transform so that uh, transform all those things so that we can be able to glorify and magnify your name as you have called us to do. We thank you for, for Rose. We ask that you would continue to bless her as she continues to use her platforms and her knowledge to serve your people. We ask that Lord, you would uh, enlarge her territory, bless the work of her, her hands and continue to use her Lord that everywhere she goes and everywhere she speaks, Father, she may be a blessing to them as she has been to us this evening. We pray that you would bless her family and you would bless all of her people so that um, as she continues to serve you, Lord, they will also be blessed. We pray all of this 
uh, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you for staying on up to the end. Wow, and somebody went to gift. That's when somebody, huh?